And many folks may be looking to the newest polls to see who may come out on top, of course, in the upcoming presidential election. But what do those polling numbers actually mean? 13 Your Sides' Jeremiah Brown joins us now from Walker Live, and he spoke to the experts to learn how they make these polls accurate. Jeremiah. Yeah, Julia and Elena, I'm live outside the Walker City Hall where we've seen a few people come and turn in their absentee ballots. But about the polls that we're seeing, I spoke to a couple of local professors and they tell me that the best way to get information out of these polls is to look beyond just one. Phone calls, texting, and methods online are all ways researchers get data that results in the political poll numbers we are seeing. So they want to get different age groups and they understand that different generations and different people communicate differently, and at least they're making the effort to mix up the sources. Both professors I spoke with from Calvin and Michigan State Universities say the polls aim to get an idea of what things could look like on Election Day and other trends while surveying a certain number of voters, such as 1,000. All polls weight by a series of at least demographic factors, usually including things like age, race, and education. You will adjust or weigh um, responses based on how they fit those demographic categories. And so typically in a real poll, you'll get very few young people. So you give a lot more weight to the answers that you get from younger voters because you need to make up for the fact that uh, the voting population is going to be younger than the population of the poll you've done. Professor Coatman adds that even the best polls have a margin of error of two to three percentage points of what may be happening in the population. Professor Grosman says you should also double the margin of error to account for other factors. So the fact that we could get the wrong population willing to respond to surveys, the fact that we could get who's going to vote incorrect, uh, all of those things mean that we have additional air. But polls are still sources of information, and both professors say we should look at the average of a variety of polls and take note of changes over time. A trend of change is something that is something to pay attention to. That's probably accurate, that if Trump seems to be up or Trump seems to be going down or Harris up or Harris down as a trend from the same pollster over the couple of weeks, that's probably pretty reliable. Now, there are reasons to take public opinion surveys and sometimes the results are clear. It absolutely is important uh, for us to figure out who the voters were who changed sides uh, or uh, have, um, uh, have, it, have changed their positions uh, over time. Uh, so survey uh, work can be, can be quite important. It can show important trends. And there are sites such as YouGov where you can opt in for these opinion surveys, like he said, provides a lot of valuable informa information to researchers. And if you're contacted by a legitimate survey organization, it's important to remember that they will never ask for any credit card or social security information. And they should also, they will also never encourage you to vote for one specific candidate. Live in Walker, I'm Jeremiah Brown, 13 on your side.